Hello, hello. Welcome to our first Immigration to Canada webinar. The topic of today is how to get a job and a work permit in Canada in food service. And uh, my name is Andy. So I'll be happy to work on everybody who is joining the room right now. And this is the first time we're going to be using this system for webinars. So I apologize in advance for any mistake or issues that arise during the presentation. We are in the learning mode right now with this new platform. So I'm very happy to have people today joining us and we'll make sure this presentation is worth your time. Thank you very much. And I respect that you want to take this time with us and spend this time with us tonight. I would like to ask your names to the people that already joined us in the presentation. You can write it in the chat uh, section, please. And uh, we're going to start. So again, welcome very much for the Immigration to Canada, uh, first webinar, Nexus Canada. And the topics of today is how to get a job and a work permit in Canada in food service. So I would like to start the presentation. And I want to remind everybody who's joining us right now that if you stay until the end of this presentation, uh, we'll give you two gifts at the end of the presentation. Number one, it's going to be the Randstar Labor Report with Occupations in Demand with a Salary Guy in Canada. For people that want to have an idea of the salary for the occupation in Canada, where well, this guy will give you the latest report, okay? And the second gift will be the Sample Practice Test or the General IELTS Language Test for those who are looking to get a language test with IELTS for the English. This sample practice test will help you to have a better idea how the, the test works. So you're going to get that at the end of the presentation. We're going to continue with the topic of the night is job openings for cooks and food service workers. This is the topic of the webinar. And uh, basically, we're going to address some questions at the end of the webinar about this topic. I'd like to start with our goal for this presentation today. We want to help foreign skilled workers understand how to apply for a job opportunity in Canada. And also, we want for people studying in Canada or candidates part of the express entry pool, how to get a job offer for a Canadian employer. So this is the two objective for the presentation. For the next 45 minutes, I want to set aside everything you know about immigration to Canada and learn how to get a work permit in Canada through the information I'm going to provide. What makes this presentation different? Well, for a start, this is me, Andy Rodriguez. And this picture is when I have the ceremony of citizenship in Canada a few years ago. And as an immigrant myself, I understand the questions that you might have in order to fulfill your dream of coming to Canada. I'd like to share this information with you tonight and I hope I can be useful in clarifying those doubts. That is made in the US when I was uh, studying in a few years ago as a student, an international student. So I had experience as an international student also in my country. In this case, it was the US. But for a start, it, my name is Andy Rodriguez. I was born in the Dominican Republic. I'm fluent in both English and Spanish languages. I received my Bachelor of Science degree from the Pedro Enrique Sureño National University of Santo Domingo and graduated magna cum laude with high distinction in hospitality. Later, I studied and worked in the U.S. for some years, and you saw the pictures already. And in 2007, I moved to Canada with my wife, of course, from the Dominican Republic. I deal with immigration uh, law, and I'm obtained my certificate degree in immigration law from Humboldt College, Toronto. I've been practicing immigration law and assisting clients since 2010. I am a certified and licensed Canadian immigration consultant, which means I'm registered with the Government of Canada. I'm a member in good standing of the Immigration Consultant of the Canadian Regulatory Council, ICCRC, and a member also of the Canadian Association of Professional Immigration Consultants, KP. Those institutions are registered with the Government of Canada, and they give me a license status to deal with immigration matters in Canada. So the question is, what brought you here? On for this situation, I'd like to share with you the main reason why immigrant comes to Canada. 
Why people immigrate? Migration usually happens as a result of a combination of these push and pull factors. You have push factors that push you as an immigrant to look for other choices and pull faction factors that attract you to go to a different country to look for a better life. So basically, the main focus of this push and pull are based on security, environment, stability, economics, and services. When we mention push factors, we are talking about lack of services in your home country, lack of safety, you don't feel safe in your home country, high crime, crop failure, if you come from a country with a lot of agriculture, a drought, flooding, poverty, and war. Those are the push factors that are going to make you, you as an immigrant, look for other choices. When it comes to the pull factors, since that you look in other countries, are the high employment, more worth, better services, good climate, safer and less crime, political stability, more fertile land, and lower risk for natural hazards. So those are the things that are going to attract you to a country. And most of the time, Canada has that effect on people. So we see now the combination of push and pull. In one side, you have persecution and violence and war. On the other side, you're looking for safety and stability and freedom. In the other side, you can be pushed because of poor wages and lack of jobs. And then you're looking for higher wages and job prospect. You can have problems with crop failure and famine and pollution and natural disaster. And then you're looking for a probability and better environment. And you can be suffering from limited opportunities, lack of services and family separation. And you're looking for family reunification, a better quality of life and availability of services. So that's basically the reason why people immigrate to other countries. And most of the immigrants coming to Canada also experience those factors. I'd like to show you a video of why people choose Canada in the first place. Let's take a look.
So, Canada is a nice country. That's why Ricardo Cordero found out a few years ago when he approached to us and he was looking for a new opportunity. Ricardo was a very successful restaurant operator in the Dominican Republic. And of course, uh, was a bilingual. Uh, English and Spanish are his languages. And he decided to have a different a change in the family uh, life. He decided to come to Canada. And here we see uh, just a testimonial of his experience with us as a service provider for immigration and how we help him to accomplish that goal. A lot of people can do that if they are, have a clear plan on how to accomplish and are able to do everything that needed to be done to migrate to Canada. It's a dream that can become true. And for that reason, we have created three strategies for people looking to work and immigrate to Canada. Based on our experience with past clients, and I think that's the thing that we see the most in a lot of people looking to immigrate to Canada. The three strategies are, strategy number one is you need to learn about the different work permit programs available for foreign skilled workers in Canada. That's the first strategy. You need also, strategy number two will be, how can you prepare a Canadian resume and search for jobs in Canada? And the first thing you need to learn as a strategy is you need to learn how to connect and get hired by Canadian employers. So we're going to talk about these different strategies during this presentation. But I assure you that once you master the three strategies, you have high, a high chances of immigrating to Canada or getting a work permit. So let's continue just to visit the first strategy. One of the main reasons that I see a lot of people failing in getting a work permit or coming to Canada as a foreign worker is they do not understand the different work permit programs available for foreign skilled workers in Canada. They just show up, I want a job, something like that, but they don't, they don't understand. So the first thing you need to do is to understand the different programs available from the provincial to the federal uh, level. What choices you have as a foreign worker and what are the main requirements that you need? So people will tell me, oh, Andy, I don't know the process, or, and they never work outside my country. Yeah, that, one, that probably is two reasons people don't want to get started, but those reasons can be addressed with the right mindset. If you understand the different work programs available in Canada, if you understand what is the labor market needs and assessment, if you're able to work while you're studying in Canada, or if your spouse is studying, you can work too. And how you can assess the application process, how can you do that process to apply for a work permit? You need to understand those topics in order to start your journey. You need to start for point A, B, or C. But the first thing is to understand the work programs available in Canada for foreign workers. And I want to show you now a video about one of the last job postings that we have promoted of the employer in Canada that's looking for certain positions. Just take a look, take some notes if you can, but it's just to give you an, a better idea of what the employers are looking for in Canada. In this case, these two positions are for food service experience workers.
interesting. So we saw two different job posts uh, that we have available right now. And if we want to revisit, basically, the opportunity is job opening for cooks and food service workers. And that's what we saw. Just to, as a summary, the wages offer between the two positions were between 11 and 15 per hour. The location, of course, is in Canada. The expectations are that your work, work duration will be morning, afternoon, evening, weekend, chief work, normally restaurant hours. And of course, language is English that is expected for the candidates. And the position will be different based on the job and employer. In general, the duration and skills are set up, stationed according to restaurant guidelines, prepare food items as directed in a sanitary and timely manner. Follow recipes, portion controls, and presentation specifications as set by the restaurant. Prepare dishes for people with allergies. Uh, restock all items as needed without, without sorry, the chef. And cleanse and maintain stations in practicing good safety, sanitation, organizational skills. So, there are duties for restaurant businesses. The requirements for the candidates, and this is for the foreign workers, are that they have to have a minimum of three years of experience preparing meals in the restaurant or a culinary degree, or both, ideally. Other skills are dependable, uh, team player, reliable, organized, can work under pressure, have attention to details, and work in a fast-paced environment. So basically, that's the requirements for the position. There's required documentations. The required documents are you need to submit your resume in English and PDF. You need to fill out a skilled foreign worker questionnaire you need to have a and sign our initial consultation. We do a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you just to assess your possibilities. You're going to need a copy of your English language proficiency certificate like IELTS, a general test, or the CELPIP if you're in Canada. And you will need to answer uh, the background questions uh, page that we add to our email message. So just to, to answer those questions, you'll need to have a better sense of your expectations, OK? And that's what Eduardo de Soto did. Uh, Eduardo de Soto was a manager, restaurant manager in the Dominican Republic, and he approached um, to us when we have some openings available a few years ago. And basically, he just went for the process, uh, and gathered all his, his documents, took his English test, and submitted the application. The employer uh, chose him as one of his candidates. He had an interview, and eventually he was granted a job offer by the employer and then we help him do the process with the work permit and eventually with our colleagues uh, we prepare his permanent resident application and he's uh, happy with his family as a permanent resident and eventually will become a Canadian citizen any day right now so that's the experience with Eduardo de Soto so if you ask the question oh do you know about the process well he didn't know about the process and he fulfilled he find out the information he let us guide him, uh, him and his family during the process, and he is a happy Canadian member of society. The same happened with Eclipse Mansion. He was a very successful director of operations and restaurant companies in the back in the Dominican Republic. And here is a Facebook testimonial of, of his gratitude to the service that we helped him do that. And in 10 months, as he's saying in Spanish there, he got his permanent residence. So that was a dream come true for Euclides. He was looking for opportunity for him and his family. And he did the same process as Eduardo, uh, get the information, prepare his resume, and all the information that he needed to do. The employer saw an impressive uh, work experience and education, offering a job. We helped him with the work permit and eventually with the permanent residence application. So he's happy in Canada. And he's one of our successful clients that can tell you about the experience and how good the decision was to come to Canada. So the undeniable truth is if you have the information and if you have the courage to start the process, follow the instructions, you can come to, you can come to Canada as a foreign worker. So the first strategy is once you learn everything, about the work programs available in Canada, then you can do something about it, plan your strategy, and start working toward the, the goal. And we're here to assist you. If you follow another strategy too, you need to learn how to prepare a Canadian resume 
and search for jobs in Canada. And this is very important because people don't understand. Sometimes they think that applying for a job in Canada is the same applying for the job back in their home country. And they understand the dynamic of the labor market in Canada. There might be some differences. And if you don't know those differences, you're going to make some mistakes that will prevent you from coming to Canada. So it's important for you to understand that there's a difference between a curriculum vitae and a resume. You need to understand that the job search process in Canada might be different from the one for your home country. So if you don't understand it, then you won't succeed at all. And you need to understand that there's tools like LinkedIn and other tools that you can find jobs in Canada. And once you learn how to use those tools, that can improve your chances of getting a job offer or at least an interview with a Canadian employer. So here we have the curriculum vitae and the resume. Use these two pictures side by side, and you have a, a, an idea how they look. And if we go into detail, we, we understand that the curriculum vitae is very different than the resume in the following. When it comes to LEMS, a curriculum vitae normally can take three to four pages. The expectation for the resume, a Canadian resume will be one page or two the most, okay? When it comes to the content, the, re, the curriculum vitae will include information about education and academic background, and uh, all the information available. When it comes to the resume, you basically are focused on the skills, experiences, and education that are gonna match the job uh, vacancy, the job post. So your resume is more tailored to that opportunity. The purpose, of course, for the curriculum vitae will be to detail the background and qualifications. You wanna put everything there, time in chronological order, when it comes to resume, your purpose is to get the employment or get an interview. And then you're gonna uh, use different type of resume depending on the strategy and the type of job you're applying for. So it is important for you to understand that difference because most of the people want to apply to Canada jobs, Canadian jobs with curriculum vitae format. When actually the Canadian employers are expecting a resume, Canadian resume format. If you don't know the difference, then you're gonna have a disadvantage when it comes to competing with other people applying for the same jobs in Canada. So you need to think of a resume as a brochure, a self-promotional tool, that's why it is. It should be brief, no more than two pages, and written in a concise formal language without first person pronouns. The resume has to be easy to share. When you have a format, PDF or Word, Word format, can be easy to share through a computer, can be issued to email to hiring managers. The hiring managers can share that information. But it's important that it could be concise one page, the better. And has to be well organized, no grammatical uh, mistakes. So you can have some changes based on the job posting, but ideally that resume has to be tailored to the job opportunity. Resumes are adaptable. Job seekers can tailor the resume to highlight those qualifications that best match the employer needs. Exactly. It's to the point the resume has to fulfill those qualifications of the job posting. You can update your profile summary and work history using keywords found in the job posting. And that's why most of the employers in North America, they use what is called the Applicant Tracking System, ATS, in the in this website or job board basically look for those resumes in the, in the database that matches that job posting. That's why you need to tailor your resume to that job posting so you can be found in the database and have more chances to be picked by the employer for an interview. So this would increase your chance of getting your resume past any applicant tracking system and get in front of the hiring manager. That's what we explained before. And of course, as we said before, most large corporations, especially in North America, utilize applicant tracking systems. So here's the idea. There's a good tool online called JobScan that can help you determine if your resume meet that criteria and can be compared to the job posting. So I highly suggest to check that tool. This is called JobScan. And from the website, they have some advice for us on how to beat the ATS, okay? You need to carefully tailor your resume to the job description every single time you apply. To optimize for ATS search and ranking algorithm by matching your resume keywords to the job description. Again, we're repeating the same information. 
important that you use both of long form and acronym version of keywords. For example, if the position required for a master business administration, you're gonna put in your resume master business administration and also the acronym MBA. If you part of the uh, the job is looking for a person who knows search engine optimization, then you're gonna put in your resume the search engine optimization and also ACO. So the idea is that you have both. So the 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 system cannot miss any of that when it's searching for uh, resumes. Okay. We highly recommend, based on the information from uh, the job scan, uh, that you use chronological or hybrid resume format. And for more information, we can give you some samples later on. Never use tables or columns in your resume because it can provo uh, provoke some or cause some major errors. Use a traditional resume font, Helvetica, Keraman, or Georgia. That type of font that way you should use in your resume. Don't use other format because People expect, especially employers and the system, are designed to read this kind of, of font in your resume. Don't use headers or footers as information might get lost or, or cause a parsing error. So don't use like headers in the in the top uh, or footers in the resume. Just make plain. It's a simple structure that the system can read and make it easy for the employers also to find it. Okay, and Use a standard resume section headings, work experience. Don't create something, oh, where I've been, since different, no. This, you follow the standards because that's what the expectation for the employers and the system, the systems, uh, electronic systems are, are designed for. And always use doc five if possible. The format, the word format is the better unless the employer asks you for the PDF format. But those basically are the two formats that you're gonna look for in your resume. Some people will say, Andy, but that's interesting. If I have a resume, I can learn. Thank you very much. But I don't have enough money. Or I don't speak English or French that well. I don't think I'm a native speaker. They're probably they're looking for a native speaker for the languages. No. We understand that English and French are the official languages in Canada. But most of the foreign workers that come to Canada, they don't need to meet a very high level. Just an intermediate level, and that's why you need a test to confirm that, we allow you to qualify for a lot of immigration programs and qualify for jobs in Canada. And about the money, yes, you need to have some money to pay for the process. But on certain occupations, the employer might want to help you or are required to help you in certain occupations. Not all, but there's exceptions to that. So, and another thing is, if you get a job offer from Canada, trust me, you will find the money. Because the fact that you have a job guarantee in Canada when you come to Canada can help you make plans and get some uh, finance because you know eventually you will pay that back. So it's an investment. I want you to see immigration process as an investment that will pay off. Again, once you get a job secure in Canada, when you come to Canada, you can consider that as an investment. Whatever you get to get to Canada is going to help. You're going to be able to pay back. Okay. I think that it's an investment, not an expense. And that's what Roderick Alpena said when he came with Jasmine, his wife, to Canada. They are from the Philippines, but they were working in Abu Dhabi, and they wanted to to try Canada for a better choice for them and, and their careers and eventually their family. And they did everything they needed to do, save money, took the English test, approached to our service, and we referred them to the employer. The employee was happy to see the, the, the work experience in restaurant and retail. And when they saw that they matched the requirements where they offered them a job, we helped them with the work permit and they're happily in Canada since that time and definitely looking for a permanent resident already. So that's what you do. The same with Wilson Teodoro Lantigua, very experienced worker in the industry in the Dominican Republic manage different restaurants in fast food and also in hotels. And with that experience, he just understood that he needed to get the language test and he needed to make some savings, made the investment, and he's happily with his family in Canada since that time, a few years ago. And that's uh, what we see here in the bottom of the picture is basically the testimonial that he posted talking about the 
the service and how we help him to accomplish his goal. So he's a very happy uh, immigrant in Canada. So the only number through is that if you don't have a resume tailored for the Canadian labor market, the Canadian employee spec with all the requirements that we mentioned, then you won't have enough chances. But if you want to work hard and create a resume, take your curriculum vitae and transform them in the Canadian resume, then you're going to increase your chances of being seen by an employer. And if you have the language and the experience, you have highly possibility to be hired by a Canadian employer. Now we're going to move to the strategy number three. Interesting, the information provided for the resume and the programs uh, for to work in Canada, but you need to know also how to connect and get hired by Canadian employers. And that's something that a lot of people, especially people that are looking for express entry, are trying to accomplish. They say, oh, and it's hard. It's like a, hitting a, a wall. We cannot get a Canadian employer to pay attention to us. Yeah. But probably because you're doing it in a, in a way that you do back home. If you want to get and connect a Canadian employer with you to pay attention to you, you need to do it the Canadian way. And for that, you need to learn how to connect with the Canadian employers the Canadian way. You need to find out which are the best employers for immigrants in Canada that are more inclined to hire foreign workers and the ones that are the best employers in your industry. And also you need to learn how to go around the Canadian job market, what strategy, what tools you can use, and also what is the workplace culture in Canada, what is the expectation for the employers. So if you don't learn those, then you're gonna have you're gonna have a big disadvantage when it comes to getting a job in Canada. So tools from come from email, how to, you know, get connections, get connected to people through email. Uh, another tool is to get your credential evaluated. If you have an education in your home country related to the occupation that you're looking for, let's say if you are in full service, you want to apply in full service and you are, you are a bachelor degree in, in hospitality or you have a diploma in culinary arts, that's something that you want to get accredited in Canada. And there's service and agencies like West that can help you, West.org can help you get accreditation. So it's better to come to an employer when you have this document from Canada saying that your education is equivalent to the Canadian diploma. But the way to do that is to get it ready before you contact the employer, not after, before. So you need to be able to get ready your language test and also your degree equivalency. And there's a tool online, it's called the degree, degree equivalency tool that can help you have an idea based on your country or what the equivalence will be. But eventually we'll need to order that credential and get a report, that's what you have in the other side, when you tell you about what it looked like, a credential of your education in your home country in comparison to the education in Canada. Trust me, employers will take a look at that and that give you more confidence when it comes to hiring foreigners, okay? The other thing is you need to understand which are the employers, know their names, how big they are, in which industry they are in Canada, in what provinces they are. So Canadian Tire, Tim Horton, Bombardier, Telus, BMO. You need to know which these names of Canadian employers. You need to know what industry they are. You need to know which are the leaders in your industry and which of these employers are more prone to hire foreigners. So this is a, a due diligence and research you need to do on your own as a foreign workers. If you don't get this information, you don't get ready, you don't gather this information, then you li you, you're gonna be very limited uh, at the time of applying for jobs in Canada. We have the Rural Northern Immigration Pilot Program. Learn about programs available for Canada. This is a new program as well as the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. When the employer don't need to get an LMIA, but if you don't, don't know about these programs, then you miss a big opportunity to come to Canada in a, in a fast way. There's reasons people don't get started. Another reason that I hear a lot is, oh, my education credentials might not be recognized in Canada, or it's very difficult to get hired by Canadian employers, Andy. Well, I just told you the, the reasons why. You know that you have a choice to get your cred credentials recognized in Canada, with West.org, for example. And I told you about what to do in order to get hired by Canadian employers. 
There's a lot of tools that you can use. LinkedIn, uh, networking, and that's what actually Gabriel Castro did. He basically learned to connect, learned about the opportunity, he got his resume ready, he took the test, and after being a successful manager in restaurant in the Dominican Republic, he decided to give a shot, apply, the employer was impressed, and he was willing to locate anywhere the employee needed to, to, to be. The employer liked that, and basically he got an opportunity. He got a job offer, and eventually got a work permit, and he's living as a permanent resident in Canada. The same thing happened to Ricardo Rodriguez. As a business successful in retail and having my experience in restaurant in the past, he decided to apply, and eventually, after getting his test, credentials evaluated, got an interview with the employer, and eventually got hired by the employer in Canada, and he's happily living with his wife and kids, and that was a dream country. It happened very fast. He sometimes doesn't believe it, but it is what it is. You plan yourself, you target, you do the investment, and it's going to pay off. And of course, he will do it again and again based on his words. The only never truth, the employers need foreign workers in Canada. They are hiring, but you need you need to be able to make a plan and give the employer what they want. They want they want to see that you are candidates prepared with language tests, with credentials uh, accredited in Canada, and applying with the minimum the requirements of the job. So if you have all those elements, then you will be able to succeed in Canada. Now, let me ask you a question. If you follow what I showed you in the strategy number one, and you found a work program that you can qualify for, and then you do what I showed you in strategy number two, and prepare a resume that meet the Canadian standards and the cover letter too, and then you use strategy three to connect with Canadian employers in your occupation or industry, know where the employers are, who are the employers, who are who employers are hiring uh, immigrants. Also know how to network with employees of those uh, companies in LinkedIn or, or social media, how to connect with them, or you can get probably an informational interview with one of the employers after you connect with any, any of the employees or recruiters. If you do all of that, do you think you could be successful? How many of you are excited about what we just talked about? You can be successful. And at the same time, I know most of you are okay. You saw the people, the testimonial of people that have done it before. This is not a fake uh, job a, a company or anything because there's a lot of uh, fake job companies in the, on the internet. It's a real testimonial for real people, for real opportunity with real employers. So if you have this information and we can help you get that job, as far as you meet the requirements, you feel that you're going to be excited about it? I think you do. But at the same time, how many of you are feeling a little overwhelmed because we have covered so much? We covered the three strategies and everything you need to do to get a work permit or get a job offer in Canada. But sometimes it's so much information that, oh, Andy, yes, you told me about, I need to learn about the programs. I need to learn how to prepare a resume and cover letter. I need to learn about the labor market, how to contact employers. I need to learn a lot of stuff. I think it's, it feels like this guy. You feel overwhelmed with so much information. But how can we do about it? You know I mean, how can we start? That's the question that a lot of people will tell me, how can I start, Andy? So basically, it is impossible, of course, to show you everything that you need to know on how to migrate to Canada in 60 minutes presentation, even if I try. I try to give you just a little hint, but it's a lot of information, I understand that. And for that reason, I created a special package for those who are ready to move forward and want to add in this opportunity. This is an opportunity that doesn't show every day. I really sincerely ask you not to make the opportunity. This is the moment when you have the choice to make a difference in your life and in your family's life. But you need to follow the information and need, need to do exactly what I ask you to do. In this case, I want you to check this, inf this information and 
is it okay with you? I want you to spend 15 minutes and go over three offers that I have for you in order to get a job and live in Canada. Three offers, because I understand there's different people with different situations, different budget. I created these three offers to meet most of the people that wants to come to Canada. And for that, I like to start with the first offer. It's a limited time offer because it's related to the job positions. And the job positions are not open all the time. They open and they close based on if we find somebody to fill those positions. So in the first position, for the offer is the work and live in Canada package. That's the offer number one. Work and live in Canada package. And the service included in the package, as you can see here, I'm just going to mention some of them. Basically, we screen and evaluate your possibility of immigration to Canada. We set you ready for an online or over the phone interview with the Canadian employer. If you selected, and again, I have to emphasize this, if you are selected, then we will prepare a return and agreement with information about the process and the cost. So if you're not selected, these packages won't work for you. You need to be selected for, in order for the package to be working. But of course, we hope that with the information I give you, you're going to get the possibility of being selected. I'm going to help you that in that matter. But this package is only going to work if you are selected. Then we will prepare your application for the work permit. We're going to, you will receive a job offer from a Canadian employer, of course, because you've been selected. And once you receive your work permit and visa, we will assist you in preparing your departure from your home country. When it means the information that you need to know in order to, when you come into Canada to the airport and everything, the documents you need to show at the border and everything. We're going to see information about the key for newcomers in Canada, what information you need when you arrive to Canada, what it seems to, to know when it comes to funding in school, that kind of information, all the basic information based on the city that you're going to be. And also then, if applicable, again, if applicable, then you, get, you will be able to apply for a provincial nomination. They're going to lead to the permanent resident application in some situation. In another situation, you're probably going to go for express entry. It depends on the situation. That's why we need to tailor based on your need and what we have available for you. Some of the uh, some also services that we offer uh, with through our partners are airport pickup, that pay de depending on the city that you're going to go to, pre-departure orientation meeting, basically online in this case. But that's what the, the package offer. If you want additional services, and these are additional, this is not part of the package, but just additional, just for your information, we have airport pickups for families, for families, housing assistance to find a house, city tour, uh, how to get a SIM card, that's a, a social insurance card that you need in order to work, the health card application, and how to do the library card application to, to have a, access to libraries, public libraries in Canada and how to get transportation car and buses passes while you using the public transportation in Canada, just at the beginning. So basically, just, these are just additional location services that are offered to those applicants that are coming to Canada. And the additional services are for families and are 2,500 Canadian dollars on top of the price of the package, okay? So this is additional. It's not part of the package, just additional if you want it. This is an example of the payment schedule, just to give you an idea. Like basically, for example, consultation online, when we check in the information, your resume, and you, you meet the, the, the requirement from the employer, normally it's gonna be $100 Canadian dollars. If everything goes well, and you have a chat with the, empl with the employer, the employer wants to retain you, give you a job offer, then we make a retaining agreement for $1,000. When we spell it out, all the, info, all the description of the service we want to provide during the whole package. And then you have a several payment based on the process. So basically, you're going to have a first payment once we apply for the work permit, LMO, LMIA, like, like it is right now, for $1,000. The second payment will come when you have the work permit approval with a payment of $1,500. A third payment will go if you wanna, yeah, you're already in Canada then you want to apply for a provincial nominee. So basically you have a 2000 for the application and 2000 one that is approved uh, to get ready for the PR application, another 2000. So basically that's a scheduled payment. Overall, that's an example of how we do with the package, okay? So basically in your home country, you're gonna be paying 3,500 uh, during the process of retainer agreement 
uh, getting the, the job offer, apply for the work permit, basically you're going to be paying 3500 in that period. And then once you're in Canada, and um, getting ready for uh, the PR application, and we're going to be counting about $4,000 in a two-year period, depending, you know, meeting the requirements, the time you're working. So once you meet all those requirements, it's going to be like a period of two years when you pay the 4000 Again, remember, you're already working in Canada in that time. So that amount of money, it doesn't become that difficult to get once you're working in Canada, okay? We have a refund policy in place, as we stated in the retainer agreement between me and, and the, my colleagues. And this cost doesn't include the government processing fee. Government processing fees are not refundable because the government of Canada doesn't refund processing fees. So we only can refund what the consulting fee will be. And that is as far as they meet the, the, the description in the retainer agreement in those situations, okay? So processing times during the immigration process. So a consultation, if every single employer wants to see you, we try to get that in 24 hours. The interview with employers after that consultation that we know the employer wants to talk to you, we try to arrange that between 48 and 72 hours, the mass. The retail agreement, then we get it ready for in a week. And the work permit, in most cases, we try to process that in you know, around three months, depending on what the processing time for the uh, website uh, of CIC said at that time, and depending on your country of origin. The SING application for the provincial, in this case, for the this is an example of discussion in this case, it's going to be three or four months, but it's going to depend on the province you are living. And the PR application, again, 14 months, but it's subject to change depending on uh, the program you apply. Okay? And there are some notes about the processing time based on the government of Canada. The processing time are not based on what we say, it are based on what the government uh, said at the moment and your country of, of residency. And you have to be eligible after working, again, for apply for, for PR or any provincial program. You need to be working for the, for the employer at least six months before that process starts, okay? So, if all this package did was to help you work and immigrate to Canada, would it be worth $10,000? Do you think it's worth $10,000? If you, this package is helping you to connect with employers, apply for a job vacancy that is real, get the interview, get the job, get the work permit, land in Canada, eventually you bring the family, and you apply for the PR altogether. Do you think it's worth $10,000? I hope you do because for a full service manager, for example, the average salary for a, a, in Canada will be $47,361 a year. So you're going to recover that investment in the first year of being in Canada. A different website telling you the average salary of these positions. In other salary in LinkedIn, 53000 So you have a range of, depending on where you're living, in this case, this is a full service manager uh, living in Toronto, we will pay 53400 again. You will recover the cost of your investment the first year working in Canada. So, is that a good investment? I think it is. If all this package did was to help you get a job in Canada from your home country, it would be worth $10,000. Again, I think you agree with me. That's what Kamal Powell thought about it. He was an experienced manager in fast food managers, and he's from Nepal, but he was working in in uh, Dubai, and he learned the opportunity. He get ready with his resume. He gets ready with his English uh, test, apply. The employer was impressed with his experience. He got the job offer. We helped him with the work permit. And from there, he moved to Canada. And eventually, he returned to his home country, Mary, and he brought his family back to Canada. That is a successful story, and Kamal Powder is, is part of that success story. The same with Isidro Moreta, very successful in management and restaurant experience. He decided to try Canada, to start his life in Canada, and he applied. The employee was impressed. He got a job offer. We were helping with the work permit. He landed in Canada, and from now on, having been successful, he met a, a, a new partner in Canada, 
and that is his home with his partner. That's a picture with his escort workers. And eventually he moved on to a different industry after he worked for several years and got his permanent residence. And he's happy, and now you see the testimonial there talking about the service that we provide to him through our teamwork with our colleague and our service. So he's happy in Canada, and he really recommend to come to this country. So get started now. You can start with this package. The basic package will cost you only 7500 Not 10000 but 7500 all the benefits that you get for getting a work permit, landing in Canada, working for a Canadian employer, and eventually getting your permanent resident. And all this will be described for 7500 you have any questions, please send those questions. At the, I'll leave those questions for the end of the presentation. But this is what the first uh, package it co it co will cost if you're interested in taking this opportunity. I have a second special offer for you too. I also have an online course. If this job is not a job that meets your experience, but you want information about how to get a job and work in Canada, I have this online course. Let me take a look and let's take a look at the video so you can learn a little bit about this offer. Okay, that was the presentation of the course. And basically, what you're gonna get in the course is you're going to get over 12 hours of video lectures, access to the recommended resources, our student discussion forum, and the ability to ask any questions you may have as you progress through the course. On top of all of that, you get lifetime access to the course. So you want to buy it, it's yours, it's gonna lifetime, it's gonna be, you always updated the, the information. So you're always gonna have the information available and updated for your plans to come to Canada. The main topics we covered in that course is basically to learn how information about open work permit in Canada, Canada work permit requirements, Canada work permit liability, Canada work visa costs, the Bridging Work Permit Canada, how to get a job offer from Canada for express entry, job offer for a Canadian employer, the Canadian work permit with job offer, post-graduate work permit. Also, we 
mention some topics, so there are some topics like living caregivers, a topic about rural Canada, the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program, we have a lecture about it. Also, what is a labor market initial assessment, LMIA, how to get it, the processing times, how to calculate that or find out, the NOC codes, how to check your NOC codes, the Canadian resume, of course, NAFTA, and all agreements in North America and other agreements with Canada, and Francophone immigration, and much more. Those are the main topics that we cover in, uh, during the course. What you will learn in that course, how to prepare a Canadian resume. We have samples of a sample of Canadian resume. We also have samples of cover letters for Canadian employers. We have checklists for work permit applications. You will learn how to use tools for language evaluation and online tools for educational credential assessment. Be able to enroll in this call. So when you enroll in these calls, you're going to be able to learn the basis of a work permit and visa application process, learn about the different Canadian immigration programs for foreigners, the workers that can apply for uh, to work in Canada, you're going to learn how to research the Canadian labor market and the different tools available for foreign workers, and also you learn how to implement job search strategies in order to increase their possibilities of getting a job in Canada. That's what you're going to get, you're going to be able to do at the end of the, uh, of the course. You'll be able to get rid of doubts about how effectively search for a job in Canada. You will learn how to do it the right way. Any doubt about creating a resume, well, you will be able to create a Canadian resume and cover letter. You'll be able to get ready for an interview with a Canadian employer. You'll be able to network with potential Canadian employers. You'll not learn how to do it. And this, this course will address those issues. Also, the problem that this course will solve for you is you're going to learn how to get a job offer the step a step how to get a job offer in Canada. You'll be able to become eligible to apply for a work permit. You will learn what you need to do in order to become eligible and also how to eventually apply for a permanent resident in Canada. Just the information that is provided and the resources that are provided in the course will allow you to get everything you need in order to work your way through the immigration process. Also, how much time and money this course will save you? Well, it's going to save you a lot of money because you're having a lot of time. You're going to avoid a lot of mistakes because you're going to do the, since the right way. Costly mistake of getting a job, costly mistake of applying for a work permit, costly mistake of falling for scammers. There's a lot of scammers on the internet telling you about jobs in Canada that are not real. So all the information in the course will help you to save time and money. And that's what basically this call will do for you if you enroll. So let's take a look at the information of the course. I'm gonna check a video when we describe all the, all the topics included in the course. So welcome to the preview of the course, how to get a job offer and work permit in Canada. So here we are in the main page with the different sections. This course will be including 10 sections that will help you achieve the goal of getting a job and work permit in Canada. Starting with the section two, so the Canadian labor market. In this section, we're gonna explore where do you want to live and work in Canada, the resources available for to determine that. We're gonna have some assignments for you to check what is the best place for you to live in Canada based on uh, information and survey. Also, you will be able to learn in this section about the NOC matrix. So you can check your occupation uh, in comparison to the Canadian system. You also will have an assignment to find your NOC code in this section. Also, you will learn how to create your job market report in the job bank. And as an assignment, you'll have also a choice to create that job report for yourself. You also will learn how to find your occupational profile in the CICIC.ca website. Also, you learn about the Canadian hidden job market how to find those jobs that are not posted on the internet, and also information about the Canadian workplace culture. So you learn that in section two. When we go to section three, you will learn how to prepare your job search in Canada. Uh, we have several topics there, including how to prepare your Canadian resume, cover letter, and the reference letter, how to create your Canadian resume with the best practices. You also learn some tips on how to interview, very important topic at the time you had the interview with a Canadian employer, 
how to optimize your job search in Canada. We also going to give you a lecture with recommended job sites in Canada you can use to find jobs in Canada. Also some strategy how to use LinkedIn as part of your plan to get contact with Canadian employers. A tool called Magnet also you will learn about this tool in this lecture. And also you have some assignment how to create your presence online. So that's what we're going to cover in section 3. Section 4 will be for the information about how to get a work permit and that includes what is a work permit, the different type of work permit in Canada, what is a LMIA, the importance of a job offer, also the choice for the bridging open work permit, what it is, how can you use that, how can you use a special situation for work permit holders, how can you determine that your employer is not in the list of the non-compliance because not all the employers in Canada can hire foreigners, and how to be aware of scams that are available on the internet uh, trying to get people to pay money to get fake jobs in Canada. We're going to give you just the information how to detect that and how to avoid that. In section 5 we'll be giving the different information about how to work in Canada, the different choices. When you are in Canada as a student, also choices for working on campus and off campus how to work as a co-op student or intern in Canada, how can you help your spouse to work in Canada if you are a student or a worker, you, how can you stay in Canada after graduation, information about the postgraduate work permit, the different choices for international mobility programs, how can business people work in Canada, and how can people under the NAFTA agreement and other North American agreement can work in Canada, and other free, uh, free trade agreement also, some information for work permit in Canada. Also for agricultural workers programs, which are those programs and how can you access the program to work in Canada. Information for the living caregiver program also and the guidelines. And then in section six, we'll be exploring how to apply from outside Canada for a work permit, how to apply for inside Canada. Uh, also the spouse or open work permit application, the requirements, how can you prove your work experience and also information about how to get a police certificate and a criminal background check. The medical exam also, we're going to be, it's a topic in the, in the section. How to find out if you need a biometrics for the, your application, how to check processing times and inadmissibility issues that may arise if you apply for a work permit in Canada. Another topic that is included in this section is how to extend your work permit and what to do after you apply for a work permit. In section 7 we'll be exploring the essential strategy to success in your job search, uh, how to prepare for your career in Canada, how to develop your soft skills, how to use your educational credential evaluation in your job search in Canada, what is a tool called the job versity in North America and the inf information that you can get from that, how can you connect with Canadian employers, how can you find the contact information of Canadian employers with some recommended tools uh, we provide in this lecture? How to use cold calling and email script to address and contact the employers? You will also learn what are the top 100 employers in Canada and also the idea of a survivor job in some cases that you used to get in Canada. Okay? Section eight talk about the pre-arrival strategies and recommending settlement services and basically we have different choices of different programs for temporary workers, the Canadian Immigration Integration Program, the list of recruiters and employment agencies in Canada. We also have the Prepare for Canada online services, also how to assess online settlement fair and the Intact Virtual Career Expo. We talk about those choices. Information about banking in Canada as a newcomer. Renting in Canada, information basically for your settlement once you get a permit uh, in Canada. And some assignment have to use the Living in Canada tool. In section 9, we will be checking the labor market information by province. And basically, you have information about the labor market of every province in Canada and territory. So, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Labrador, Territories, and Quebec. And finally, we have the Section 10 that talk about a special program for foreign workers. And in this case, we this is a range of topics that were included in this uh, section. 
including the International Experience in Canada, the Global Security Strategy, the ICT Startup Program, the Francophone Immigration for Express Entry, some opportunities in rural Canada, the Atlantic Pilot Program, the Rural Northern Immigration Pilot, the Northwestern Ontario, the Skilled Trade String in the Ontario Program, um, at the end, we have a conclusion with some extra bonus for you. So this is the, uh, basically, overall, the curriculum of the course. I suggest you to take a look at it and join if you really want to come to Canada as a worker and live here as a permanent resident. Thank you very much. Okay, so we saw the information. So this course is for people like food service supervisor, cooks, truck drivers, caregivers, farm workers, construction workers, retail workers, express entry candidates, IT professionals, call center service agents, international students, foreign workers in Canada, and skilled workers abroad. So this course will help anybody that is looking to work in Canada and want the, the right information. That's what Audrey Acosta did. Once she had the information, she was able to use the information, contact the employer, and we assist her to, to do that, and she was successful. Here she has a testimonial of our services and how we help her. She has experience and graduated from hospitality and worked in restaurants back in the Dominican Republic, and now she's living with her, fa with her family in Canada. If all this online course did was to help you get a job in Canada from abroad, would it be worth $1,000? If the information in this course, that's a question for you, will help you get a job in Canada, do you think it will worth $1,000? So for now, I really want to offer you for $199 US dollars today. $199 US dollars today. So keep that in mind. You got all the information that we check and can help you actually make a difference in your goal to come to Canada. I have now the third special offer for the night. And basically, we can have this online course in combination with my coaching service in which I give you the online course, the online consultation. We can do assessment and an appointment to discuss your possibilities. You can retain our immigration services if after implementing all the information from the course, we can help you do a resume optimization. We can help you with interview practices sections. We can provide you some practice tests for IELTS and guide you through your educational accreditation. That is what is called a coaching service. Um, this service we can provide as a third offer of the night. Online consultation we can do through our website, Visita, for an appointment online. Uh, our service in the, our website to do your assessment. And uh, basically get the results that Frank Simo did when he believed in the information put into practice get our services, and now, after being a successful manager, restaurant manager back in the Dominican Republic, and after graduating from university, now he is with his family in Canada. Uh, he got a job offer from an employer, got a job, and now he's happily in Canada. Same benefit that they got. So when it comes to benefit of living in Canada, I just want to mention some of, of besides the ones that we mentioned before. You have to understand that Canada is a country that cares for its residents, and there are a number of social welfare programs offered by the state. In addition to the free healthcare program, and I say free, I mean for the assets of the, of, of the residents. Again, they are funded by taxes, but for the residents, there is a very, very affordable program. And the children education into grade 12 is a free service for the children. So children can go to school, until grade 12 for free. In the meaning that you don't need to worry about private school or anything, even though Canada has private school, the education of your kids are guaranteed by the state. And beside that, the Canadian residents are entitled onto the Canadian pension plan to receive retirement pension. You get a pension as a resident of Canada when you retire. It's gonna depend upon the age in which you chose to opt for the plan and it's optimal at age 65. That's, that's the information about the pension plan. Also, you are entitled for social welfare allowance for the government if you are unable to support yourself or you're not able to get any job. So that's the benefit of, of a Canadian society. 
when you have choices, even if you lose your job. Unemployment benefits, Canadian residents are entitled to a 60% of the last wages drawn in case of layoff from a job if she has worked for nearly six months in Canada till then. Okay, so you're working for years and you get laid off for a company, then, then the government of Canada will cover you for 60% of the last wages you draw until you get a new job. So that, that is the idea of a society that care for the residents, okay? All the benefits of living in Canada, of course, is that you are entitled to an old age pension in Canada. You also have a maximum uh, person that has stayed in Canada for 40 years after age 18. You have to fulfill the requirement for your age pension, okay? Healthcare, again, it's one of the finest healthcare systems in the world. Have excellent hospitals, clinics, and doctors. Um, they are located in most communities. And usually, they are available free of charge for all residents of Canada, registered under the National Health Insurance Program. And the provinces manage those programs. And you get your health card. So it's a, a very, very good uh, service. Education. Getting a good education is more important than ever before. And Canada have free public school till grade 12. And one of the best uh, education system in the world. So that's a bunch for you and your kids. Okay. Child benefits. You get child benefit for your kids if they're growing up here. You get a child benefit at the federal and the provincial level. You get a amount of money every month for helping up bring your each child. So that's a good benefit that is a few countries actually offer to their citizens, but Canada offer to to you. So at the end of of the result, do you think it will be worth all these services, all the benefit of becoming a Canadian uh, resident, social services, getting a job, all this is worth, but an online course can cost around 199. The consultation normally is go at 149. Immigration services always run around 5,999. The resume documentation, if you do that outside, normally we will be charged 499. Interview practice sections, some services will charge you 149 for a total value of 6,999. So you put all together those services. I'm talking about what the coaching services offer you. We pay probably seven thousand dollars easily. So, if everything that you get, you get a job in Canada or secure a job in Canada, apply for a PR with all the information of the sec of this coaching package. If it's worth seven thousand for you, well, I hope it does because right now all the services of the coaching alone, coaching with the online course. We're offering today, tonight at 2,997, just today. 2,997 today. So that's a good choice. You get all the benefits of the online course, the online consultation, the retainer uh, immigration services, resume optimization, and the interview practice. All of that for 2,997 today. For choice number one, you have choices. You can do nothing with the information we're giving in this webinar. And uh, basically just sit down there and, you know, which to come to Canada some, sometime. Or you can go for choice number two and do what Eduardo de Soto did with his family. He take a leap of faith, start working, do the investment, and finish like other immigrants have finished in Canada. Those past clients are now in Canada. They have the faith, they did it, and they are happy now with their families. It's up to you. The guarantee is that you're dealing with a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. We are registered with the government of Canada. And you can find those even in the website of the ICCRC. And that's why the guarantee you have. I'm registered with the government of Canada as an immigration consultant. And all these packages that we put together for you are career packages that you can count on. The real question is then, are you ready to work in Canada? Are you ready to work in Canada? That's a question. And for that, you have the three offers that we prepare for you tonight. Work and live in Canada package for 7,500 when you have a job offer. 
and only apply when the employer offer you the job and then we start the whole package for you. Or you can have the coaching immigration service when you learn how to get the information about applying for a job in Canada, contacting employers, getting a resume ready, LinkedIn profile ready, and you have all the tools that you need to apply for, uh, for a job. Or basically just looking for information for your budget, they just go for the online course when you have all the information uh, available for you and going to save you time and money. So these are the three offers available for you. If you want the first two offers, you can contact us to our email address. I'm there now. This is CanadaVisa at gmail.com. Just contact if you're interested in the, in the first two offers. In any of the two offers, the first two. And if you want the third one, then I'm going to give you the call to action here. And you can take advantage of this in the next 30 minutes. Just click Enroll Now, and you will direct it to the link to purchase the course. So it's up to you. And now, the first person who signed up in the next 30 minutes would get the following bonus. So I'm going to have another bonus on top if you enroll for the course right now. You're going to have a 30 minutes free consultation and assessment with me. 30 minutes free consultation and assessment with me. We evaluate your chances of immigration to Canada and give you recommendations. That is on top of getting your course. If you get your course now, you enroll now in the course, you can get those 30 minutes free consultation. You also will get a free optimization of your resume. We want to check an application and when your resume, once you prepare your resume from the course, we're going to optimize it and use the tools that we have available to recommend you the changes that you need to do to have better chances of getting a, an offer for an employer, okay? That is the second uh, bonus we're going to give you. So get started now. These are the three packages. If you want the package number three, the online course, you can just enroll right now. If you have you want information about the other two packages, just send us an email to our nexuscanadavisa gmail.com. That's our email. And we'll be happy to answer those questions. Now, if you have any question about the presentation overall, this is the time to ask a question. We'll be happy to answer you in the chat. Thank you very much for your patience.